day viewers and listeners you are welcome to another episode of our weekly online chemistry class today we are going to look at another aspect of chemistry entirely different from organic chemistry that we have been talking about all this while and uh, we are strictly going to be discussing periodic table but before we focus our attention on periodic table proper we need to know more about the historical development of periodic table and periodicity of elements and do not forget to subscribe to our youtube page, uh, to our youtube page in order for you to have access to more of our videos thanks for watching and listening so history brief history of periodic table The long form of periodic table that you are all familiar with comes a long way before we can arrive to what you have, the arrangement of elements both in groups and in periods. And it can be dated back to over 200 years ago when elements such as phosphorus have been discovered by Brand, among others. But meanwhile, it was Antonio, Anthony Lavoisier who first define an element as the smallest particle of a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler units by any chemical process. However, as at 18th century, about 55 elements had been known, and the problem scientists had then was how to arrange these elements in order to make it easy for, understand, I mean, for students at the college level to understand. Imagine you have 55 different things, and you want to know much about each and every element that we had there. And the only thing that was common to the element, apart from symbols, was the atomic weight. Because the atomic number had not been discovered. You can uh, uh, observe that it was after the discovery of atomic structure that all the subatomic particles were discovered, starting from the work of Michael Faraday, who discovered electrons using an electrochemical experiment and the, process, the particle was named by G.I. Story. Then J.J. Thompson, using the ghost cartridge, I mean, using the cathode ray oscilloscope, was able to discover the properties of uh, electrons as well as the mass to charge, uh, charge to mass ratio of an electron. But the charge on an electron was discovered by Millikan and it was a uh, uh, Ernest Rutherford, who discovered proton, why neutron was discovered by Chadwick. But among all, uh, it was when all these discoveries were in place before we now have the modern periodic table, where elements are being arranged based on their atomic number. So let's go back to the 18th century. The first periodic table was actually published by Dobrainer. Dobrainer. In 1829, this man proposed the law of trials, the law of trials or the law of triads. And this law states that elements can be arranged. Don't forget, I told you, as at that year, we have we had about 55 elements. And the law states that elements can be arranged into three groups, with each group consisting of three members of similar chemical characteristics. Interestingly, uh, the triad of Dobrenner consists of lithium, sodium, potassium. This is the first triad. Then we have calcium, strontium, barium. The second, then we have chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And uh, Dobrenner pointed out that the middle element of a triad or triad has an atomic weight that is approximately average of the other two members in the group. If you take, for instance, the atomic weight of lithium is approximately 7, sodium is 23, uh, potassium is uh, 39. If you add 7 to 39 and divide by 2, you are going to get 23, which is the atomic weight of uh, sodium. You can repeat the same thing for calcium, strontium, and barium. If you add the atomic weight of chlorine to that of iodine, divide by 2, you are going to get approximately something, a figure that is very close to the atomic weight of bromine. 
So, and according to him, a particular member, all members of a particular tribe have the same chemical or similar chemical characteristics. However, as at that time there were about 55 elements, and his periodic table only contains nine elements out of 55. So we have an efficiency of 46. And that was why the periodic table, uh, much work was still uh, on as at that time to get a periodic table that we accompany, uh, that we uh, contain all the elements that had been discovered. Then, before a new periodic table was published, using the idea of Dobrena, other triads were also discovered, like the triad of sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. Because we discover that if you add the atomic weight of sulfur to tellurium and divide by two, you are going to get approximately uh, the atomic value that is almost the same as the atomic weight of selenium. So each of these are triads. So after some years later, around 1864, then we have the Newland periodic table. Newland published his periodic table. And as at that time, seven more elements had been discovered which make the total number of elements to be 62. So the new line periodic table accommodated all the 62 elements, including the transition metals. However, the, uh, the noble gases or inert or rare gases had not been discovered as, as at that time. That means he arranged the elements in rows of seven. We have a period of seven. That means each period consists of seven elements because the group eight elements are not discovered been discovered and it proposed a law of clay of octave a law, the law of octave and this law means every eight elements in a particular period we have the similar property to the first element in that period so if you look at uh, the according to Newland when he arranged the element the eighth element, the first element was lithium, having the least atomic weight, because elements were arranged in its periodic table based on atomic weight. So lithium having the least atomic weight. After lithium, we have fluorine. Then after, after fluorine comes sodium. Sodium is the eighth element after fluorine. And sodium falls in within, I mean, directly under lithium, which also maintains. Uh, the Dobrena tribe, and same as potassium, which is the eighth element after chlorine. However, one major disadvantage of the law of octave or the Newland periodic table was that if the, its periodic table was only accurate for the first 20 elements. After calcium, the periodic the arrangement was no longer correct. Then another thing was that the length of the rows were not the same. Some rows are long, some rows are short, and Newland could not give uh, tangible explanation for that. Interestingly, another thing that caught the attention of scientists, which made them to make sure that the Newland periodic table got no further idea, was that his periodic, in his periodic table, some dissimilar elements were kept together to occupy the same position. For instance, sulfur and iron were kept together in the same position in the periodic table. And when he was asked to explain this, how come this uh, happened, he could not give a reasonable explanation. And as a result of that, science or chemists were still looking for better ways to arrange this element in a proper manner. Then after Newland comes the father of periodic table, the man we refer to as Mendeleev. Mendeleev is the father of the periodic table because his periodic table led to the modern periodic table that is in use up to date. And Mendeleev also arranged elements in his periodic table based on their atomic weight. Interestingly, apart from arranging, accommodating all the elements, and he also separated the two dissimilar elements that were kept together in Newland's periodic table, Mendeleev also left gaps for undiscovered elements in his periodic table, and he also predicted their properties. For instance, under boron, he left a space under boron and said a particular element will be discovered in some years to come and that element will be named Eka Boron. He named it Eka Boron. He also left some gap, a gap below silicon and said uh, name that Eka Silicon. Eka Silicon and so on and so forth. So he was able to predict undiscovered elements which makes his periodic table to be uh, a unique one compared to the uh, previous periodic table 
tables that had been published. Later on, after Mendeley's periodic table, the element uh, aluminium was discovered, and that aluminium fits in in the position where Mendeley proposed. Likewise, another element was discovered, which was germanium. Likewise, gallium, and so on and so forth. And they fit in in the position that was predicted by Mendeley. And that was why we refer to him as the father of periodic table. Then, after the, the modern uh, atomic theory that I've said earlier, starting from the work of John Dalton, up to other lead scientists, J.J. Thompson, and the Strudel, we discovered that Elements are meant to be arranged in order of increasing atomic number and not atomic weight. And that is what leads to the modern periodic law, which says that the periodic properties of, I mean, the characteristics of elements in the periodic table is the periodic function of their atomic number and not atomic weight. Remember that it was mostly that discovered atomic number using the X-ray uh, experiment. So, the modern periodic table that we are going to look at in our next episode, we are going to look at how elements are being grouped into two, the groups which is the same thing as family, as well as the period, which are elements on the same horizontal line. What are the relationships between them? What are the similarities? What makes elements to occupy the same group? And what makes them to belong to the same period? This will form the basis of our discussion in our next episode. Thank you very much. See you some other time.